Hello there and welcome to Business AM. Today we talk the performance of the microfinance sector. Now one outstanding factor from the performance of the microfinance sector in 2018 is that you're going to realize that this sector has not been that much of a flower bed as it used to be back then. Now the results show that just a couple, mostly just three, of the microfinance banks in the country are the one that were able to post results in 2018 and if you go back and look at the others you find that even the other companies that was that were able to post results just a marginal part of their products were the ones that were able to stand out with results this morning i am joined by the ceo smep as we talk about the performance of his bank in 2018. Congratulate you again for your award. Yes. I know you've been the best bank that is second runners up in product innovation. Yes. So let's therefore talk about your award by looking at how you can sum up your performance in 2018. 2018? Yes. Uh, performance in, uh, in the year 2018 was uh, encouraging, uh, that I would say. It was, uh, we've been building a microfinance bank that has a bit of history. And 2018 is the first year that we reported a profit after a dry spell of five continuous years. And uh, we have also realized uh, quite substantial growth in terms of deposits. We grew our deposits with over 20% in that single year. And uh, there was a lot of improvement in terms of our products, the product offering in the marketplace. Uh, so in a nutshell, uh, 2018 did a good basis for us in the 2019 uh, growth. And we are actually realizing the growth in the year 2019 yes. out of the work that was done in the year 2018. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, one of the outstanding factors that are really going to come to you is some of the reasons in which some of these micro lender CEOs will tell you were among the reasons why they did post such kind of a performance. Other than IFRS 9 that everybody's talking about that has affected everybody across the board, SMAP was able to post for the first time in five years profitability in one of its products. So I asked him to really explain why the sector did post such a performance in 2018 and here's what he had to say. Um, if you check, just a general walk through their financials as they came out, there are two areas of concern that came up, that there was a very little growth in terms of their own book. Um, and, uh, you know, income from banking industry, whether it is commercial bank or microfinance banks or credit only, comes from the loan book. Basically, these are the amounts of loan that have been passed there. There was a minimal growth. Uh, and that can be explained by many factors. Uh, when we started of the year, uh, last year, there was a bit of, uh, uh, a bit of hiccups in the country be before the hard check. So there was a wait and see attitude. And people were not really very brand into the market, meaning also the loan demand was raw. Uh, then the other thing is, uh, uh, again, with the images of fintechs, uh, the traditional markets that we, people who are coming to microfinance banks are getting alternatives. These alternatives are coming from fintechs that are regulated or not regulated, and also commercial banks are playing into the same league. So that's one factor that depletes the growth in terms of loan book. Then uh, the cost of operation is also very high. Again, working through the financials, uh, the cost of uh, the cost of uh, uh, the cost of funding, what we call uh, uh, basically the cost of money that we are already, is also very high for microfinance institutions, because the alternative is that they borrow from commercial banks at 13.5 percent or so, plus the other additional fees. Then they go and lend, and they will be competing out there uh, with commercial banks that have cheaper money. Or alternatively, they mobilize deposits, XMF, and we mobile deposits at relatively high interest rates. There's one common denominator across all uh, microfinance institutions. 
that our cost of financing is high. Now, those two factors, very minimal growth and a very high cost of operations, majorly driven by the cost of funds, uh, now um, had a very adverse impact in terms of uh, the return. Then the other factor I can touch a bit is on the changes in terms of the regulatory environment. Uh, last year is when we were implementing IFRS 9. This is an accounting standard uh, that changed the way we provide for non-performing loans. That even fresh loans had to be provided for. The impact was an increase in provisioning. And uh, given that it's a area of execution, then all microfinance institutions, and even a number of banks, particularly the, the third tier banks, had uh, their bottom line adversely hit mm -hmm. by the addition of provisioning. Yes. Maybe moving forward, uh, the item of provisioning may not recur. We will we'll only be dealing with incremental. Uh, but the cost of operations, uh, that's a thing that needs to be dealt with. For institutions to be more innovative in terms of deposit mobilization. Um, and then also for growth, again, is in terms of innovation. Uh, do what the others are doing if they are coming up with systems online uh, through mobile banking. Do it, but do it within areas that are within your expertise, yes. so that you don't spread too thin, then, then you lose. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. Therefore, when we are talking about a micro-lending company in the Kenyan economy that has had to post a profitability in one of its products in 2018, when overly we are talking about just a marginal performance from its counterparts, I did question him whether I really had to change some of the strategies in 2018 to actually realize some of this performance that he's talking about. Because you talk to him, he's telling you that, well, the performance generally was quite encouraging. Let's take a listen. Uh, well, the, some of the things, we, we had to let go of some of the products that were not profitable. And the, the products that were not moving, we let them go and we engineered them. Yes. Um, and then also, in-house, we had to go through a drastic a cost reduction uh, period. So we look at the systems, the processes that are not beneficial, but they are there, selling costs, including review of the suppliers, so that now we are able to bite. There are offices we had to let go. Uh, we had to restructure some of the offices um, in terms of, um, is this space too big, too costly? We relocated some of our banking branches. We um, divided some of the spaces into two and released the others to the hard roads. So it's a combination of many things, and also in terms of product innovation, um, uh, we came up with uh, new products or pushed some of the products that we had aggressively into the market. We, we have a uh, 52-week savings challenge, which is basically a financial literacy program. We've taken this one a notch higher. We went to churches, we went to primary schools, uh, we went to youth forums, we went to anybody who wants to hear how they can be able to start lowly and grow in terms of the wealth. And we are still doing it. And by doing that, we are mobilizing deposits at a relatively uh, cheaper rate than a fixed deposit. Fixed deposit is 13%. When we go through uh, the 52 weeks savings challenge, it is 7%. And the amount is accumulating by day. For anybody interested in the way the economy operates in 2019, you're going to realize that there's been this sort of slowdown from the main banks in the way in which they are willing to lend SMEs in the economy money in the wake of the cap on interest rates from the Central Bank of Kenya. Now, the Central Bank of Kenya has looked at this situation and has recently introduced the Starwe product that has been termed as revolutionary in the Kenyan economy, which is bound to extend credit to SMEs at just the basic lending rate of 9%. Now, this is in line, also comes in competition with some of the activities in which micro lenders are also getting into, that is in terms of lending to SMEs in the country. So I put a question to the SMAP CEO to tell us exactly how he thinks this would also affect the businesses or how they yet to operate with the Starby product in the economy. Uh, what I would say is that uh, when we define SME, yes. Uh, that, that's a, an, a term that needs to be redefined. I think it is um, uh, is hard out in the marketplace. Yes. Our definition of SME here, of course we have the standard des definition of SMEs, but I can tell you SMEP is an SME when we go to transact 
with our bankers. They view us as an SMB, a tiny thing. But we are three billion a company with 280 employees. I mean, 2.1 or 2.2 billion uh, deposits to date, but you see an SME. Uh, so that's a term that needs to be redefined and also check what we want to do and what we want to achieve in the market. One of the key issues that I know is that we don't, we have not done adequate research on what SMEs want and their needs, and that needs to be refined. So that when some of these products are coming up, they are trying to address the needs. SMEs don't have appropriate records. Right? You may ask them for audited accounts. I mean, they have not invested in that. They are pushing business, but when you go and request them for uh, appropriate accounting records or systems, they are not there. So, what I, I thought is uh, uh, the launch was good, it's towards a positive area, but in terms of empowerment of the SME so that they can access this fund, it needs to be done. And I'll give an example. Um, the, the government had a focus in terms of giving contracts to SMEs, right? And a bias including, uh, of including youth yes. and, and women. Yes. But how many accessed? Very few. Why? Because of their capacities and other issues that they are carrying. All of them have a backlog. You, you, you're not good. The, good. the offer is good, but you're not qualified. You don't have this paper. You don't have this paper. Uh, you, you don't qualify for one reason or another. Then sadly, we have many, many people that have been listed. And uh, this, we immediately apply, they will be thrown out because of the issues of listing. Uh, so that's what I'm saying. It's a good initiative, but more work needs to be done to ensure that we remove the roadblocks uh, that uh, make our SMBs not access finance. The problem is not interest rate in our market. The problem is access. And access is because of the way the business is run. There's no proper governance. Uh, it is one-man show, but it may be operating at two billion duka, but one-man show. So when the banks and they come, uh, your cash will be good, but when they look through, there is no future. Yes. That needs to be helped. Somebody needs to work with that entrepreneur to help them solve that, yes. right? Uh, it will be it may be good having good, good cash flow, but you don't have records. You actually cannot authoritatively say what, which is your profit. What is your profit? Your profit margin. And those are the things that we look for uh, as lenders. Somebody needs to address this. Right? So in terms of capacity building, work with SMEs so that when files are set aside, they can easily access them. It's a good you know, innovative, you know, innovation, as I'm saying, but need the more needs to be done. On the other side, um, uh, the issue of ensuring when they supply, they are paid on time. We have many institutions, businesses in Kenya mm. that heavily rely on SME, including the government, yes. right, for provision of services. Mm. But once they deliver, they don't want the 90 days or whichever credit period. So SME, one side, they have delivered, they have done whatever they were requested to do, but then they remain for a long period of time without being paid, a year, two years, three years. So uh, they incurred costs. So it means that their continuity uh, becomes questionable. Uh, because uh, on one side, they have a very good, they have a big asset in terms of debt. So we should pay them, but they are not being uh, paid. So the question is, what are they doing as smart to make sure that this performance that we're talking about in 2018 actually turns for the better? Oh, okay. For us, we are value-based. If you look at our vision, it to be uh, our vision is a dynamic uh, Christian provider of financial solution to transforming lives. That's our bottom line. That's our DNA. I Meaning, it's not just reading, but are we dynamic to come up with innovative products that will impact upon our clientele, our customer base, positively? That's number one. We are keen in terms of what we do and our product offering. And basically there are four. Number one is financial literacy, because we have a duty to empower. Remember, we are charge-based. So we have a mandate, special mandate, to impact upon uh, the lives of people positively. Uh, so um, number one is financial literacy. When you walk around, the problem is that people are not getting money. The problem is not that the people are not accessing money. The problem is that even the little they have is not being 
manage appropriately. Right? Scenarios where people sit back, they are waiting for the big bang to change their lives, but they are not doing anything with the little that they have. That's why we have betting. I mean, people are there fixated, hoping that one day uh, I'll do something and my life will be changed over. But the 100 shillings they get per day, 200 shillings they get per day, they are not managing them appropriately. Uh, so financial literacy, and that's why we talked about 52 week savings challenge. A drive even to help them, uh, people to save and organize themselves and invest in, in vehicles that are appropriate. The, the other one is in terms of uh, um, 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 what we call wealth creation. That's why we have savings accounts that are speaking to every category of our people. Women in charge, men in charge, men and women in the marketplace through our group PSL account, current accounts, uh, fixed deposits account, and, and even the children's account. We have um, Musigimara uh, for children with a bigger bank. So it means then that's a problem we are giving. Now for loans, we look at them not uh, uh, as a, uh, what we call the game changer, but a facilitator. We are coming to you to advance uh, a facility because already you are doing something and you need a holding hand, somebody to hold your hand and walk uh, with as you pursue your own uh, objectives in life. And then the last product is financial management. So we have pay bills, uh, we have uh, ATM cards, um, all of them mapped into accounts, CITs, if you are doing a fundraiser, particularly for our churches. Uh, so when you look at our product bouquet, now uh, we feel that there is so much that we need to do and we have not done. Because the need out there in the market is so huge. We are entering into partnerships. We have huge partnerships with Safaricom to help us to deliver with our commercial banks, our, the bigger commercial banks that have ATM networks to be able to deliver. Uh, even checkbooks, we have a partnership to be able to, to deliver. Uh, when now we are talking about also coming up with our own app, it will have unique propositions. We have a proposition there for churches, because they are a main market for us. We have a unique proposition for groups, because that's a major market for us. We have a unique proposition for uh, the individual customers who bank with us, but within the micro uh, sector, yes. uh, because they are unique to us. So every market segment that we serve will be appropriately addressed, even in our innovation toward uh, using the, 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 the what we call cash cash or, uh, for, for spend. Now, if you contrast with what the others are doing, possibly the others, they are just pushing. Most of them are just pushing uh, uh, lady. But that's just one of our products. They are not doing financial education. They are not doing about uh, wealth management through savings account. Uh, they are not doing cash uh, transfer services. Our offering will be complete within the four areas of our service delivery. Right, that is the SMAP CEO talking about the performance of the microfinance sector in 2018. We join you next week for another in-depth look into the Kenyan economy.